Passiamo ora al, al primo dei nostri ospiti eh, polacchi, come vi dicevo in, in questa edizione dei Graphic Days e come vedrete anche nelle mostre, se avete già potuto ehm, osservare insomma, le mostre che sono esposte nell'hangar, abbiamo una ricca rappresentanza di, di opere provenienti dalla Polonia. Questo è frutto di una partnership con i Polish, ehm, con il Polish Design Week, abbiamo qui René che parlerà domenica, Uh, e ci racconterà nel dettaglio questo tipo di partnership. Quest'oggi però abbiamo già due, uh, due primi ospiti uh, polacchi. Uh, quindi switchiamo sull'inglese così da, da poterli introdurli. Uh, so the first one is uh, Edgar Bach. Edgar is a um, um, graphic designer in his studio, but he's also a teacher in the School of Form of uh, Poznan that uh, I didn't know before uh, your talk, but when I saw your, I mean, so the, the, the website is very, very interesting. So great work and um, Edgar will uh, will talk about the again about history but from a different perspective so uh, it will be learning from 90s so we will have some iconic objects uh, some uh, some other stuffs uh, and their relation with the with the nowadays so Edgar please join me on the stage is this the thing yes. this okay Thank you for the invitation. Yep. Thank you guys, guys for coming. Thank you Torino Graphic Days for having us here and thank you René for bring his, bringing us here in one piece. Um, I will explain the title later. Uh, so um, I got a few thoughts about uh, how the context of living in Poland and in Warsaw um, uh, creates the input uh, of my work and how a uh, few, uh, few uh, misunderstandings from before uh, did the same. So uh, first of all, this is Warsaw in um, over 100 years ago. Uh, there were no Poland for over 100 years in that time and uh, Poland was divided between three uh, empires around uh, Europe uh, between Russia, uh, Austria and Prussia and uh, we were, uh, we were uh, as you can see, dominated by Russians at the time and uh, the ar architecture of Warsaw looked something like this. Uh, um, but then the First World War happened and um, for the first time we gain independence and uh, in 1918 uh, we started to build uh, the, the country and the city again. So, uh, so the main idea was to turn from the east and to look at to the, to the west. So we have destroyed this beautiful building and started to build something like this. So we uh, at, at the same time gained independence and uh, we walked into Uh, into the future with, uh, with modern architecture. Uh, it lasted for, uh, for 20 years, then the Second World War happened. Uh, this kind of buildings were destroyed because over 90% of Warsaw were destroyed completely. And uh, then communism happened. And uh, um, uh, this is also modernism, one beautiful example of modernism. Uh, of course, there, were, there, there are no palm trees in Warsaw. Uh, this is an artistic project that's pretty much, um, that, uh, that tells pretty much everything about Warsaw and uh, what kind of city it is today. And uh, this is uh, an architecture from the 50s. Um, you, can t uh, you can find these kind of examples through all the um, former, uh, former USSR and in Moscow and in all Russia. Uh, some kind of look at classicist architecture, uh, but from the 50s. And uh, then uh, happened, uh, then, uh, then happened this, uh, this block of flats. And as you can see on this picture, it's not uncommon in Warsaw to see these contradictions between old and new. Uh, this is uh, this is a building from the 70s or 80s, which pretty much still exists today in this form. 
and uh, there and then happened the 90s and the late postmodern architecture came to war so uh, and it looked like this mm, and then uh, we tried to do something with this 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 late communist architecture and we painted in it in different uh, variations to make it more happy and uh, Warsaw today looked like this and if you if you want to find some examples of contradictions you can pretty much find it everywhere so the big city like like, like the the the, the, um, the the skyscrapers uh came and uh and finished the job and philip will talk about the 90s uh later and more about this late period but yeah and uh, in the 90s, uh, I was listening to, to metal music, a lot of this stuff, and it was pre-internet era, so uh, there was no easy way to, to find new bands or, or, or to listen to new, new, new um, tracks. So I recorded uh, a, a late night um, TV special about black metal every week. It was late night, I had to go to, to school, it was the beginning of high school. So I, uh, I set up my VCR to 4 uh, a.m. It and in the morning I just listened to the to the tracks and were, uh, I was happy. And uh, one day something went wrong and I recorded a different TV special about uh, electronic music, and it blew my mind completely at this time. Uh, it was more like more like video art than a music video that was I was used to. And it was um, it was amateur. It was uh, it was like new media or video art, uh, repetitive music with repetitive repetitive primitive computer visuals, and that is something that um, I embraced. And uh, I thought, oh, uh, this is the language I would like to use to to other to communicate to other people through design. And then I thought, okay, maybe graphic design is something I. I could do in my life, so that that was the moment, and um, and uh, all the projects that I'm gonna show you here are somehow connected to these two topics that I that I, that I talked before. So, uh, Vav magazine was the magazine about culture in Warsaw, about opera, about cinema, literature, literature and and so on. And um, during the during the, the studies. Uh, we were we were thought that uh, braveness and boldness and contrast is important in your work. That when you have to say something, make it clear. That make use contrast. And uh, I was very curious at the time uh, how to do this because I didn't saw it around me in Warsaw. It was it's 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 a city that it's not designed at all. And uh, no one uh, ever used this kind of thinking that, that, that contrast is is a way of um, of communicating. So I thought, okay, this, um, this is contrast. Uh, what will happen if I reduce the contrast in in in, in creating forms uh, as much as I can? Uh, I designed the logo for the magazine and I designed two separate grids. Then I overlaid the grids. There, there is no virtual no connection between the grids, so I overlaid uh, overlaid these two grids, and that created the grid on on which I started to to design. So every spread and every oh, I'm sorry, so every spread were, were were different, and I will show a few examples later. And this is the um, design of a, a watchmaker or guy who repairs watches. I don't know the, 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 the proper word in English, and uh, I always liked it, and uh, I thought that, okay, maybe we should somehow incorporate this typography into our magazine about Warsaw, because it's vernacular typography. And at the same time, uh, my friend Oleg Modzelewski showed me, showed me the work of um, Rafaela Dražić. Uh, she's a Croatian designer, and uh, spent a couple of months in Warsaw, and she obviously saw the same sign uh, as me. And, and created a, a, a typeface. I wrote to her. She got only few letters. So I asked Oleg and uh, our another friend Jurek Gruchot to design uh, a whole typeface. 
So we created this typeface as a garmist and used it together with uh, some classical modernist typography to say, hey, this is my Warsaw, this is how Warsaw looks. Uh, these are a few covers of, of, of the magazine and uh, yeah, let's see the spreads. So as you can see, there's no visible, um, visible uh, grid or visible rules that you can, uh, you can see turning the, 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 the pages. Uh, the photography uh, is sometimes very close to the text, sometimes there's a lot of space around uh, and yeah, these are fragments of the spreads. <coughs> so uh, working in that magazine was very fun because it's, uh, uh, you have rules so it's not completely freestyle but it's a lot of, a lot of fun uh, and it's more like painting than designing. Sometimes we turn the page 90 degrees to just to break the, 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 the order of the magazine. Uh, sometimes we uh, reduce the, the whiteness of the pages by um, putting overall photographies. And uh, I really like this, 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 this the, f the, f the first few letters, W and A. So I tried to figure out how to make a complete typeface out of this, out of this mm, brutalist modernist rules. Mm, at the same time, we have to move the magazine from Warsaw because we ran out of money and the city didn't want to uh, encourage us by, by, by giving us some money. So we moved it to, Kat to Katowice, uh, which at the time was trying to achieve uh, uh, the um, European Cultural City Award or something like this, uh, which they didn't. Uh, but uh, but uh, but that uh, that uh, um, created the opportunity of uh, of issuing the magazine there. Yes, yeah, so I so I got the typeface now, and it's called Cement. Uh, in in. Uh, in tribute to the to the lot of um, concrete in Warsaw, and after a few projects like this, when I was trying to uh, take an essence of the of the city, I was uh, I got another idea. Okay, so let's clean the city. Let's make something that will make this city and and, and country better, to make things that are legible and that are. Uh, clean and um, are not postmodern in a way, or just classical modern. Um, there's this place in Warsaw. It's uh, it's a theater uh, uh, in a definition, but at this time uh, there were no uh, they were no one place. They were doing the the the, 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 the job. Uh, they were they were waiting for the city to to set up the place so they uh, but, but they had the budget so they did a lot of mm, uh, a lot of stuff around the city uh, it was not a theater uh, uh, all the time it was a lot of just different cultural venues uh, so I get this idea okay so when there's not a place, let's not make a closed logo. Let's uh, leave it open. Uh, if uh, if we need uh, a, a logo, okay, let's make a, a just a, a just a typeface and um, and the bars that symbolize the the place or the scene of the ta of the theater. Uh, if we have to tell more about the the different uh, the different venues. Uh, we can uh, use the line to tell us another story, like the, the maybe something is, uh, maybe something, uh, when, when maybe you just want to check something, when we, maybe we want to divide, when maybe you want to, um, maybe you want to connect the different things that are new theater, maybe the th new theater is the beginning of something, maybe um, maybe you want to just mark something that is, is this is new theater. Mm, you can connect to, to separate different things 
on one poster, uh, yeah, and so on. It goes like this. Uh, there were a couple of ideas to use it, uh, use this language inside of the building to uh, connect different parts of the building or to just select something or just to make a barrier between outside and inside. Uh, this is the place now. This is how it looks now. This is old uh, car park and uh, yeah. This is the inside of the building. Some of the original ideas uh, are visible here, here in the, like this neon lights or mm, yeah. So we designed the pictograms based on this idea of line, of drawing. Because the line is the basic uh, basic metaphor of, of, of drawing of something that is in process of something that is uh, that is always uh, changing and uh, pretty much at the same time uh, I designed a series of, of poster uh, each poster was about a different district of Warsaw um, this is about the, the, the place where a lot of new families with children live this is about the city center, which is chaotic. Uh, um, this is about the, the... This is the first one I, I designed just for me because I wanted to learn all the names of the bridges in Warsaw. Uh, so I started to read about these bridges and, and to just draw it. And I still don't know the names, but the, the poster gave me this job. Um, but this is about the district that connects two different... Um, uh, parts of the Warsaw divided by river. This is about um, the district which got a lot of big communist flats. Uh, this is another like this uh, and another like this. And this is about the district that, that lays on the other side of the river and um, I didn't have anything interesting to say about the district except that they are constantly looking at the better side of the Warsaw. So this is, this is the better side. And then uh, the project grew. Uh, the posters started to circulate. Uh, we were printing it. And uh, uh, the, from time to time, someone wrote to, to me, oh, can I have a tattoo from this poster? This is the, f the first person. This is the second one on the other side of the leg. And this is uh, the, the third one. I, kn I knew about a few other uh, humans that uh, are uh, tattooed from these posters, but uh, they uh, wouldn't, um, wouldn't give me their photos. And uh, then I checked Instagram uh, with the hashtags. So I uh, found these two uh, cats with the, with the posters, and uh, there are a couple of more of those and a couple of more of those and uh, and yeah more and i'm still collecting it and uh, what i learned from that that this is th this was something very important for people to say that i'm from warsaw and um, this is my mm, this is my place that are there are a lot of people in warsaw who came there and they're like me and they need uh, some kind of identity, and they probably got this kind of identity in these posters. Uh, and the language is so simple and probably modern for them. They not only think about themselves that are, they are living here now, but they are I don't know maybe middle, upper middle class or something. So this is the, the, these are two separate messages that they are sending us. Then I checked this uh, on Pinterest, and there was over uh, 6,000 shares of that, and that's just one of the screenshots I did. And then I started to see it in the magazines and in uh, movies, and in uh, uh, I got fan art on my mail, and uh, yeah. And then the wallpaper came to Warsaw, and they approached me to to do the cover about uh, the Warsaw special issue. So I tried to, to figure out something about Warsaw, something new, which I didn't draw before, but they rejected all the ideas and they wanted variation of the posters about, yeah, um, about the iconic Polish, well, I'm, I'm sorry, about the iconic Warsaw building, which is Palace of Culture. 
And then I created these posters just uh, in, my, in my free time, and it was another hit. I sold many copies of, of, of that, and then uh, I had to do a cover of a magazine, uh, which also is Warsaw-centric. And yeah, that's all. That's all of the story, but it grows. Uh, cleaning the city. It, it's, it's our new it's our new account, the Polish Museum. It's the Museum of Polish, Polish Jews in Warsaw. And they, it's a quite big institution. They got different sectors. A lot of people who uh, run the projects and different projects, they got um, this, um, the many exhibitions and uh, conferences and, and, and so on. So they needed to clean up the, all the mess. So uh, that was the logo that we had to work with uh, because mm, decade ago they invited some agency to do the logo for free and we couldn't <laughs> change it so we uh, so we get into the to the basics we just use this small rectangle small black, black rectangle and uh, build whole system on that rectangle uh, that's the basic logo type but it uh, it can move like this sheets of glass uh, uh, on the window in the main entrance uh, so the systems system work some work like this uh, these are the basic rules because the rules are very important as you can see uh, this is part of the their brand book how to in incorporate the rules in a project uh, that's a part of our first presentation for them we tried to set up the rules and at the same time break them. Um, but they didn't want to use that. So this is, this is like a diagram of, uh, of all the possible um, connections between the, the basic figures. And this is how it actually works uh, in, in a day communication, day by day communication. These are different posters using the uh, the system, as you can see, uh, the, the, the two re basic rectangles with the name uh, are shifting, so there's, a, there's a, some fun in using that. Um, I also illustrated three books for children, and this is the, f the first one. This is total, I did it um, by accident. Uh, I was a juror in a, in a um, competition, in an illustration workshop, and then I met, uh, um, then I met the, the publisher, and um, she got this idea of um, publishing again this very common, um, this very common uh, children's uh, Wierszyk? poem. Thank you, Philip. Poem. This is basic, basic Polish poem about patriotism. So we did it again, but uh, as patriotism is a very important term in Poland, and everybody talks about this, and uh, there, there is no political debate with mentioning patriotism, so we wanted to open this uh, discussion and inject some other, uh, some other thoughts about what it's like to be a patriot in Poland. And this, in this book you can't find anything about wars and about being brave uh, in a battle and so on, about giving your life instead of gaining independence. This is about collecting memories of your family, this is about learning, this is about uh, reading books, because Poland got this very low rate of um, uh, readed books per person. This is about uh, planting a tree and uh, uh, about uh, um, being active in politics and voting and a few other examples. Uh, and this is something which connects us to Italy because our uh, our um, national, national anthem was brought in Italy, 
and uh, there was this big um, there was this big um, military movement with uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, which connects us to France also, uh, and so on. Yeah, that's it. caring about animals and uh, caring about using water. And uh, this is the third book that we did together about uh, women's rights, about fictional planet Egaliterra. And uh, yeah, I can show you a few examples from that book. This is about the domestic violence, the, um, about just uh, uh, male pressure in society, about uh, football fans, which are all male and aggressive, about all male God, and uh, about Polish mm, Polish money when you can't find can't, can't find any women uh, about uh, yeah the, the domestic work that is not being paid about uh, equal rights that are in the constitution but are not respected and uh, and about a big protests uh, which happened in Poland one year ago and uh, the protest was against uh, radicalization of um, abortion law. And uh, the, there was this, I don't know the history of the symbol, but René got this one of these umbrellas. There was this um, symbol that everyone who attends this protest should bring an umbrella, which, uh, which was just brilliant because if you see photos from the from the protest that it's just a, a ocean of black umbrellas that, that looks very good uh, this is an info dump at the end of the book with just pure data about how this how this works and the third uh, the third part of this uh, of this presentation is, is about uh, searching for my own language uh, which um, which uh, you can just call Purman general generative art, and I really like to uh, mm, do as little as I can designing the stuff. Uh, in this example, you can see I just designed this poster, very simple typographic poster, and I tried to do another and another version of the poster like this, and just in trans blind work uh, just to have as many variation as I have and then reduce it to the one that I really liked. Of course, if I, uh, if I would be a better uh, programmer, that would be automated and probably better, but uh, this, is, uh, this is all I can do. And um, making variations of, a, of, a, of, a, of one piece is just my pretty much uh, basic um, way of working. And this is a poster for a festival of cre creativity in, uh, for young people in, in, in Warsaw. And they are using um, social media and they, are pr they were printing a lot of posters. So I got this idea of um, creating one basic poster and, and and every another piece of the communication would be just some, the same poster with another layer. So it looks like this. We just added layers and printed it again, added layers and printed it. So it's like animated poster without real animation. So again, you can call it poor man's generative art. And so on and so on. And New Theater is my, uh, or was my, uh, my, my best client for a long time. And they asked me to design covers uh, for, uh, for a program that they were printing every month or every two months. So this is the first couple of covers, the second couple of covers. And um, you can observe here what can the line from the identity do uh, if you use it uh, just uh, like an abstract uh, design. And next generation and uh, another generation. And this is uh, another fan art mail that I received.
from someone who really liked to draw on this. And this is a next generation of the poster, uh, for, for of the cover and so on. And thank you.